Broncos. Good morning, in Broncos. Welcome. Welcome to Faith Family United Church of Christ. Uh, just thought we'd throw a new song in there. You guys picked up on that really well. Guys, good job. Um, here at Faith Family, we are an open and affirming congregation. We would love nothing more than to have all God's children come and worship with us and share the love. All are welcome here. Uh, we have a little saying that we like to say every week. We say, no matter where you are on your life's journey, or where you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. Amen. All are welcome here. Um, here in a little bit, we're going to uh, do communion together. We do communion every week. So those that are out there in Facebook land, um, if you want to gather up uh, the elements, uh, bread, crackers, uh, wine, juice, whatever, um, we'll bless them together and we'll take communion together. Um, is there anything else I need to say? I have to look over here. The director's over here, and, and the stage manager's here. And, uh, so let's go ahead and get started with our call to worship. Here I am to worship. <clears throat>
As we're here in the year 2024, we're going to change our response slightly. I will say, this is this we pray, and you will say, oh God, hear our prayer. It's less hierarchical, or whatever that word is. <laughs> oh, thank you, God, for waking us up today. This we pray. Oh God, hear our prayer. Good job. <laughs> A year ago, Congregational Beth, Congregation Beth Shalom graciously welcomed us here. We offer prayers and gratitude and our love for the Rabbi Makowski and Congregation Beth Shalom here in Brandon for a safe haven and continued gracious welcome to us and to their house for their Sunday worship. A year ago today was our, well, a year ago today or last Sunday was our first Sunday here. This we pray. Oh God, Almighty and merciful God, we call to mind before you all whom it is easy to forget those who are homeless, destitute, sick, isolated, and all who have no one to care for them. May we bring help and healing to those who are broken in body or spirit, that they may have comfort in sorrow, company in loneliness, and a place for safety and warmth. This we pray. Oh God, hear our prayer. Oh God, we are the face, as we face the start of 224, we pray for our world. Let the star of your justice always shine in the hearts of those who are in authority. Enable all nations to recognize the sanctity of each and every human life that's in their care, so that all may experience an abundance of peace and security. We bring before you all areas of our world currently at war, and ask that the leaders of those nations will be able to find a solution to peace. This we pray. We remember the life of Dr. Martin Luther King and all who continue to work in the justice of this world. This we pray. Oh God, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all those who have lost their way. We raise before you all whose lives are unfulfilled. We 
pray for those whose lives are restricted by illness. We remember the chronically ill, those in constant pain, the depressed, and the despairing. We ask prayers for all those fighting various addictions. We give thanks for the positive progress that Allie has made, Patty and Frank's daughter. She recently had her foot and ankle, ankle amputated. We ask prayers for Kim and Phyllis as Phil suffers dementia and Parkinson's disease and is in the last stages. Spoke with Chris, who's in Indiana with his 18-wheeler, zero degrees, freezing, but he wanted to let us know that Barb has been admitted to the cardiac unit with some heart challenges, but she's making good progress. <coughs> we ask prayers for Dottie, and we ask prayers for all those who are caught in our crazy weather patterns. We ask God that you hear the prayers that we've brought forth to you today and those that we hold deep in our heart. This we pray. Oh God, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, we pray for all those that are coming to the end of their journey. We pray that they may come into your presence and kingdom. Today we pray for Steve of Congregation Beth Shalom. He worked with us with the food pantry. His uh, celebration of life is this afternoon. We pray for all those who mourn and all those who are mourning. This we pray. Oh God, hear our prayer. Eternal God, as we go out into our neighborhoods this week, we ask for your loving presence of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will shine its joys and strengthen its sorrow, us in sorrow. This is prayer. Oh, God, hear our prayer. Good job. You can pray us. <laughs> I read this, uh, this saying the other day. It said, uh, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those that can't read, but will be those that can't learn, unlearn, and relearn again. <laughs> Thank you. Now is the time in our, in our service that we get to share God's love and peace with one another. And love and peace to you out there in Facebook. Uh, if you want to type in your love and peace at the bottom, love and peace to you. Everyone here, if you want to stand up, shake hands, high five, hug, or just fist bump, go ahead and share the love and peace with each other. I'm going to go Better than I deserve. Hi, Facebook.
I decided to start with, what is the definition of stewardship? All the dictionary definitions that I came upon defined stewardship as an ethical value that embodies the responsible planning and management of resources. So then as I was doing my Google search, I came across what is the definition of stewardship in the Bible? In the Bible, stewardship is another way of talking about how to live your life. In the New Testament books, the word steward is rooted in the Greek word oikonomos. It means the manager of a household. Which led to what are the four pillars of stewardship? As a faith community, we strive to be a community of hospitality, prayer, formation, and service. In sharing generously of our talent, time, and treasure, we grow in the stewardship way of life, the discipleship way of life. Finally, that led to, what did Jesus teach about stewardship? One of the classic passages of stewardship in Jesus' parable of the talents, Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30, or Luke chapter 19, verses 12 through 27. In it, the master rewards those who steward well the resources he committed to their care and punishes those who do not. But that's really good. So I realized that giving the stewardship message was really going to be a very easy thing to do because all of you are already wonderful stewards of the gifts that God has given each of us. We are at this time a pretty small congregation, and yet you will hear during our council meeting later this month that we have been good stewards of maintaining not only the church finances that we gained from the sale of our property on Lithia Pinecrest, but the budget that was required to keep Faith Family running and growing. And we all know that our stewardship has grown and reached out in our community as well. And so I close with, thank you for your stewardship. Keep up the good work. This will be on file. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be up here. No. That's why you're shaking your head. What's he doing? My turn. Who writes these uh, these uh, services anyway? Good morning, Faith Family. Today's scripture is from Psalms 139. Okay. Adonai, you searched me, and you know me. You know if I am standing or sitting. You read my thoughts from far away. Whether I walk or lie down, you are watching. You are intimate with all of my ways. A word is not even on my tongue. Adonai, before you know what it is, you hem me in before and behind, shielding me with your hand. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, a height my mind cannot reach. You created my innermost being and stitched me together in my mother's womb. For all of these mysteries, I thank you. For the wonder of myself, for the wonder of your works, my soul knows it well. My frame was not hidden from you while I was being made in that secret place, knitted together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my body even there. All of my days were written in your book. All of them planned before even the first of them came to be. How precious your thoughts are to me, O oh God. How impossible to number them. I could no more count them than I could count the sand. But suppose I could, you would still be with me. I, uh, I'm sorry about that. I, I wanted to, I, I forgot to remind you, um, we're doing a new translation. This is the Inclusive Bible translation. 
and it, so it, it kind of takes a lot of gender and stuff like that. And uh, in, in other Bibles, it would say, for the YHWH, it would say the Lord, and it kind of, well, goes back to the original text, which was, and that, of course, is God's name. And uh, just so you know, um, in honoring our host Jewish congregation, they would never say God's name. And so to honor them, we use their terminology. They would say Adonai. So uh, just to let you know what, what was happening there. All right. Where am I at? God transcending time and space, omnipresent and omniscient. Wow. Use those big words today. We will be continuing this month's series, uh, sermon series, from the Psalms. I'm going to do all, all the Psalms are going to come from, uh, or all the sermons are going to come from the Psalms this month, in which we are looking at God and what God is, who God is, or just a better understanding of how awesome God is. Um, last week, uh, we uh, did a sermon we did a sermon on um, God's greatness or his omnipotence, um, all-powerful God. And uh, Cindy, uh, even though her, her uh, sermon kind of went a little bit, her children's message went a little bit off, but it was entitled, um, God is Bigger Than That. And that's, that's the thing. When we look at the Bible and we try to understand God, we have to understand that God is bigger than just what's in the Bible. He's bigger than that. We look around and we see this beautiful creation and we still see that God is bigger than that. Okay, so this today we're going to go in and we're going to talk about God's all powerfulness, his, um, or excuse me, his uh, all uh, knowingness, his omniscience, and his omnipresence, all presence. God is present everywhere. Um, and of course, this is to understand who God is and what that means to us. Okay. All knowing, omniscient, standing or setting, God knows. Did you catch that? Whether I'm standing or setting, God knows. God reads your thoughts from afar. God knows. The words will come to your mouth, and before you say them, God knows. God hints us in in the future and the past. God knows. This is inconceivable to the psalmist. How does God know all these things? But guess what? It's wonderful. That is what the psalmist says. I watched a movie the other day. It's called uh, Interstellar. Have y'all seen this movie with Matthew McConaughey? He's an astronaut and he crashes and time goes by and the world's basically collapsing in on itself because of uh, uh, the food, the crops are not being able to grow. Um, there's too much uh, nitrogen in the air and the, uh, the crops or blight is taking place. And there's not enough oxygen for the, for the plants to, to they take the oxygen and they produce, or they take carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. Well, it's not happening. And so all these crops, after he crashes as an astronaut, he becomes a farmer. And then somehow NASA finds him, and guess what? Hey, you've got to save the world. So we're going to send you out to outer space, and you need to go find these other astronauts that we set there to see if we can find another planet to go live on. And in his goings about and finding, um, trying to find these other people, he uh, they find out that, hey, it's not going to work. Nothing is going to work. So they have this plan B where they're going to like reseed just like drop our DNA on different areas. And 
make a new colony out there instead of bringing everybody on earth to this. And he's like, I'm, I'm not having that. I'm going back home. And he ends up getting pulled into this uh, black hole. And in this black hole, where what scientists think should be what they call a singularity, that's where everything collapses into a very small space. And instead of hitting that, he hits what, what should be a, but it's a fifth dimension. Now, if you know the, your dimensions, you got, you got two dimensions, right and left, up and down. That's two dimensions, kind of like your television screen. You can't see behind it or, you know, how deep it goes, but you just have two dimensions. And the third dimension is that depth, forward and backwards. So you got that space, okay? And then you got time, and Einstein taught us that. The time dimension is time starts at one place and goes forward. We can think back, but we can't go back. We can think forward, but we can't go forward. So time is the fourth dimension. And now he's made it into this black hole, and he's someone, someone has created this fifth dimension. And in this fifth dimension, he's able to be everywhere at once. He's able to know the past and the present. He's able to visit the past and the present. And what he does is he visits his daughter's room. And he's able to communicate. And through his communication, he's telling her about this fifth dimension, about how gravity works. And so she is able to take that, and she is able to save her life. And she is able to uh, bring him out of the, um, the black hole, and he ends up coming home. And she's old, of course, now. And he's still the same age. It's kind of weird. You know, he's, he's a 40-year-old man, and she's like a 90- or 100-year-old woman, and that's his daughter. Anyway, interesting thought, though, this fifth dimension, almost as if um, God was there. God is kind of like that fifth dimension. It was hard for us to conceive it, but God is in like this next dimension that we haven't discovered yet and we don't understand it. Because God is here and he's there and he's everywhere. And God can you imagine that though? If you could be everywhere in time, everywhere in place, in places, then guess what you would be able to do? No, everywhere. You would be all knowing. God is omniscient. God is all knowing. Maybe God is that fifth dimension. Maybe that fifth dimension is heaven. I don't know. I'm like the psalmist, it's beyond my understanding. But we can see that God does understand this. Because God is omniscient. The other part of this omniscience is the omnipresent. Now there's two parts to the omnipresent. There's the omnipresent of being everywhere, being here, being in Ohio, which we don't want to be right now because it's too cold, um, or up north. So that's the physical part of omnipresent. But there's also an omnipresent of being in time. That God is in the past and God is in the future all at once. So this omnipresent isn't just God is everywhere, but God is also um, everywhere in time. Now I put down that, uh, could you imagine being in being able to see everything in Florida and in California at the same time, that's omnipresence. In Germany and in China or on the moon at the same time, that's everywhere at once. This is going back to the idea of that, what I said last week, the force, it's all around us. 
It even gets in us. The other day I was watching uh, Disney and I was watching uh, Percy Jackson. And Percy Jackson's in the water and he's caught on the bottom of uh, Mississippi River. He's got a root and he can't get out. He can't get out. And if you don't know, Percy Jackson is Poseidon's son. Okay, in the Greek mythology. And then this little water nymph comes to him and says, Relax, breathe. And so finally, after panicking and everything, he finally just takes a breath. And that is what it's like with God. The water being completely around us. Now, I use the terminology, the force, but could you imagine if we were all underwater and the water would be God? When we breathe in, we breathe in God. So God is everywhere, all at once. This is being omnipresent and physical. But God is spirit and fills the spaces between us for all creation. When I think of things like this, are you familiar with CERN? CERN is the big super collider that they built in, in Europe. And, and basically, it's, it's miles and miles, a big circle, and they take particles, they take, you know, something that's smaller than an atom, and they run them around there super, as fast as they can get them, and then they, they make them smash together, and then they read the stuff. Well, they're looking for what, what this tiny particle is called the Higgs particle, or the Higgs boson, but it's the Higgs particle, and they're looking for that, and what they believe is this particle holds everything. Yes, they do call it. Some scientists have nicknamed it the God particle because it holds everything together. Super collider, making the two particles collide together, and off of that comes this little tiny um, particle that they're looking for, the God particle. God is everywhere. I know this is oversimplifying it, uh, and scientists will be going, <laughs> but oversimplification. God is everywhere, and God holds everything together. Another part of omnipresence, of course, is the time, and Einstein has shown us that time and space kind of go together because you can't have one without the other. In other words, we started time a long time ago, the Big Bang, if you will, creation, if you prefer, and boom, the world was created. And from that, time was created. And time always goes in one direction. But not for God. Because God is in all times at one particular moment. We are not like that. We have to continue along our time. That's a lot of stuff. A lot of science. But to say that God is not only omni, omnipotent, all-powerful, like we learned last week, but God is also omniscient. God knows everything because God is everywhere, at every time, all at once. God is amazing. And if you can't understand that, you're not alone. Because many, many people have trouble. Many people have gone crazy trying to figure that one out. The psalmist just says, I don't understand, but I know you are God. Now I have one application, not one, I have an application to be made from all this information. And this is how great and how powerful, all knowing and ever present. God of creation is. Verse 13 says, You stitch me together in my mother's womb. God stitches us together in our mother's womb. Now, if you go back and you look at Plato and some of the old Greek philosophers, they believe that we are body, we are physical, and we are soul. Is that what this is talking about? That we are stitched together? soul is stitched into or stitched together with our physical bodies? Could be. But what this does mean to us is that from the very beginning of your life, God knows 
everything about you. God knows everything about you. All my days were written in your book. All of them planned before, before even the first of them came to be. In other words, when you became the stitched together person, your body and your soul, God already knew the ending of your life. How it would come to an end. And do you know what? In all of that, God loves you. That's the important thing to think about. God loves you. Even though your life is laid out before God, and He can look at it from your birth to your death, and God says, I love you. I love your mistakes. I love who you are. I love who you love. I love when you rejoice. And I love you. All of you. God understands what you have been going through in your whole life. God is, only, is the only one that can say, I have walked that mile in your shoes. I have seen it. I have observed it. And when you snap at your wife, your brother, your neighbor, I understand why. All those things that led up to that. But that's okay. Because I love you. See, we have a forgiving God. A loving and forgiving God. Because He understands. God understands who we are. God wants you to be who you are and live the best life you have. The best life you can live. God even came to earth and gave us an example of how we should live. That's a hard one to live up to. A hard example to live up to. But still, this is the example. There is one thing that God does desire from us. And that is that we, that all of us love one another in that same way that God does. God wants us to love one another as God does. You be you and I love you. Because you're not me Let us all allow each other to be who they are. You be you, I will be me, and we will both love each other. All of us striving to love each other the way God loves us. Amen. Amen.
Sing the dark song. thank you for all the blessings that you give us in our lives. We are glad, we are glad givers that we could give back just a portion of what you give us. May it go to spreading your love to the world so that all may come to know that you are the God of love and that all of us need to love one another as you love us. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Preparing our hearts. The institution of the Lord's Supper comes from us in Matthew 26, 26. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after he broke it, he gave it to his disciples. After blessing it, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, 
Drink it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went off to the Mount of Olives. Join me, if you will, in the communion prayer. O God, our awesome God, great and powerful is your name. For you hear your children and tend to their needs with your powerful works. God of salvation, God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, look upon us, sanctify us in body and in soul, and grant that we, being purified from all immorality, all unrighteousness of the flesh, all selfishness and in spirit, purify our whole being as we partake of this mystic blessing here before us, this feast that brings us all into unity as one body, the body of Christ, and one world filled with your love through that example of your Christ. For you are these, you are our support, our help, and our defender. To you all honor, praise, and glory. We pray that you through the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us show our support and our, our, me, our unity as we say the prayer that the Lord taught us. Please use whatever language for the divine that brings it closest to your heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we take the communion, as I ask the ushers to come forward, uh, please, if you will, um, come forward on the right side, yeah, your right side, and uh, partake, and then go ahead and return back to your seats. Um, I will be on the, the left side up here, and if you'd like to me to give you a blessing, and then come see me and then return to your seats. <laughs> Thank you.
Sorry. Well, the music was really loud. It kind of threw me off there for a minute. <laughs> Scott, you look like someone that got sent out in the office or sent out in the hall because you were being bad. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting out there. He's the usher in the back of the, the room here. Where am I at? Giving thanks. That's Prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you. And I'm only 55. Oh my goodness, what am I going to be like when I get older? Pray, uh, pray, pray for you. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for Cindy. <laughs> pray for Cindy. <laughs> a prayer of thanksgiving. God, we thank you that you are a gracious God. A God that overlooks our, our miscomings. And that you see us for who we are. And the love that we have. And you love us in spite of all of that. And you will always love us. And you will give us that grace. In Christ's name, we thank you. It's time. Well, the first announcement today is to thank Jill for organizing an absolutely amazing uh, Boots and Blankets distribution yesterday at the Trinity 
Cafe. Probably one of the biggest distributions we've ever done. Um, we counted at least 150 people. We gave away practically everything we had. And we had some wonderful, uh, a, a big amount of donations. And we want to thank uh, Debbie Williams uh, in particular for purchasing a lot of what we gave away, uh, like over 50 pairs of brand new shoes, uh, undergarments, all sorts of things, and for uh, backpacks. The backpacks were purchased by Debbie, and for paying for the truck to haul it all there and, uh, and, and everything. So thank you, Debbie Williams. That's what I was talking about when I was giving the stewardship message. This is stewardship, people, and we really thank you all, especially the people that participated as well because it was it was very rewarding to do that very rewarding and uh, it's wonderful what what our little church does for the community so thank you again for that uh, let's see uh, today uh, we are today we are going to uh, the uh, memorial service for Steve Feldman uh, if you need the address please see Cindy after service today that's at 1 o'clock, so we're going to be wrapping up hospitality a little quicker today than we might normally uh, in order to get there on time. And speaking of hospitality, I think we still need some volunteers for hospitality. I'm not sure we've got the rest of the month covered yet, um, so please check in on that if you would. Uh, next week, our book club meets on the 21st. Uh, that's the uh, book about the discussion that we're having about Dr. Luther, Martin Luther King's book. Where do we go from here, chaos and community? Uh, and uh, ask Cindy about joining to the Facebook group uh, so you can see some of the comments that have already been made about the book. Great book, great book. And of course, next week is the third Sunday of the month, so it's food pantry distribution uh, from, um, I think that's 3 p.m., 1, 1, 3 p.m., right? And the organization for that starts shortly after the book club meeting. Uh, last Sunday of the month, uh, which uh, is the 28th, will be our church council meeting, and we're trying to uh, make sure that the last Sunday of the month is our, uh, the fourth Sunday of the month is going to be our council meeting from now on, so you can put that on your, on your uh, calendar and, and know that for sure. Starting in uh, February, we're going to have uh, alternating social justice and sacred conversation meetings, so uh, February the 11th will be the Social Justice Awareness uh, meeting, uh, which we will discuss uh, some issues about voting and uh, some of the um, social justice issues that we need to be aware of when we are voting. And then sacred conversations on race and diversity will begin in March. Do we have any ongoing uh, needs for the uh, food angel? Jill? Uh, water. Water, okay, water. All right, thank you, Jill. And um, how are we doing with volunteers for the youth group? <laughs> Invite your friends to have kids, and uh, we need to be prepared. So, Cindy would like some volunteers to help her get ready for having a youth group uh, meeting as soon as we have some youth. All right. Do we have any other announcements that I have? Uh, Super Bowl. Do we have a Super Bowl announcement? Oh, we do. How could I not know that? Oh, well. Oh, well. Anyway, Mom and Kay, Scott and I are hosting a Super Bowl fundraiser at our home on February the 11th, coming really soon, Super Bowl 58. Kickoff is at 6.30. Our doors will open at 5. We will have food ready by 5.30, so come early and socialize, watch pre-game, play cards, uh, play some board games, whatever you want. Tickets are $25 with 100% going to the church. There's also going to be commercial bingo going on during the game. We'll sell cards for that. Again, that money goes to the church. And just so you know, I added an amp to our system, so it will be plenty loud. What? Um, there'll be plenty loud on the, on the pool side so you can hear the game. So tickets are limited to 25 so see me for tickets, $25. Look forward to a fun time. Thanks. And for anyone that hasn't been to, to Joe and Scott's house, Mom and Kate's house, um, 
Sangria is great. It's, they, they always they, they are such gracious and, and wonderful amazing. hosts. Now you and, need to talk about sangria. Yeah, sangria. Okay. <laughs> and and if you drink enough sangria, hey. Stop <laughs> secret recipe. I, I keep on telling them that they both need to just retire and, and be party planners because they, they do such a great job. Let let us uh, let us go ahead and encourage uh, and, and share the love in our benediction. Christ has no body but ours, no hands nor feet nor wheels but ours. Ours are the visions through which Christ's compassion is to look out on this world. Ours are the feet and the wheels which Christ goes about doing good, and ours are the hands which Christ blesses us now and blesses all the world. Amen. As we leave here today, may God bless you and fill you with his love. May you have a heart that overflows that love, telling that story of Jesus' love, God's love for everyone. Go in peace and spread God's love to everyone. Amen. 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 Thursday. Yeah. 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 Yeah.